You know, it was clear us all the way along that we needed to ramp up the, the level of rigor and, uh, and critical thinking and engagement and accountability in our classrooms right from the get-go. Um, and I think somewhere along our, our third or fourth year, we, we got to a place where we had the, the systems and structures and cultures in place around classrooms. We had created a place for us to really be able to focus on instruction in a way that we hadn't up till then. We knew that our kids um, could do better and work harder and think harder and be more, more articulate about what they were learning. And we were looking for what are the right instructional levers where we could start a culture of, um, do you really know what we're asking you to know? Can you really do? What we're asking you to do, and so we landed on you know five or six very simple uh, routines or techniques or strategies um, where teachers were checking for understanding throughout the instructional period. So the, the the high leverage strategies that we're paying attention to in the class, checking for understanding. One, I want teachers to constantly be referencing the learning target. What we're doing right now connects to what the purpose and goal of this class is today, and what the purpose and goal of the course is over the semester or over the year. Two. Uh, we're using guided practice. When kids are engaged in independent or group work, um, there is one, you know, the teacher is, is providing an exemplar for how they do that um, uh, and, and what they're expected, what, you know, what's the end in, in, in sight for them. Three, we're doing catch and release. So while kids are engaged in independent work or group work, you know, you're coming back together as a whole class so the teacher can lift up, here's a really good insight, here's what's really working. Or, you know what, I'm noticing we're getting a little off task, let's put ourselves back to this, or let's connect it to the learning target. Uh, we use no opt out and cold calling, which is about making sure that kids voice are, are, are being held accountable for understanding what they're doing um, as well as uh, uh, making sure that you hear from every kid in the room and not just the ones who want to raise their hands. We're using a debrief at the end of every class so we want teachers to circle kids up to sit down and say here's what we did um, you know what did we learn today what was the process how do we do as a team uh, in working how do we do as learners today how does this connect to what we did yesterday how does it connect to what we're doing um, uh, as we move forward how does it connect to the big picture of, of the whole course. We keep our eye on the ball for the checking for understanding techniques and, and, and that push that we have for all teachers uh, to be using them in a couple of ways. One, um, we have a very aggressive individual teacher coaching program um, and uh, we're very clear about who's coaching whom and that this is the focus of our instructional coaching. Uh, two, um, every week we distribute to all faculty a data sheet or a data breakdown of the classrooms that we visited, how often we saw each of the techniques. Um, and we break that down into percentages. So teachers can see that you know, 90% of our classes did a quality debrief, but only 50% of our classes did catch and release. And, and that gives the faculty as a whole a sense of, okay, we need to do better. Where am I in that 50%? Am I one of the people doing it or am I one of the folks not doing it? And if I'm not doing it, what do I need to do differently so that I can move us up to our school-wide goal of 80% all the time? And to pronounce that to students and to faculty and to parents and to the wider community that 80% of the time we're gonna walk into our classrooms and we're gonna see all of these strategies being used, that is what is unique to being an exhibition learning school.